Hey guys, later. Hey guys, later. I'm Requisa 211 here, and welcome back to some more Let's Play Fire Emblem Three Houses. Ingrid, welcome back. Did you speak with your father? I did. I just returned to the monastery. What happened with the proposal? As soon as I informed him of the suitor's unsavory tendencies, he rejected the proposal outright. Were we to form ties with such an individual, it would bode poorly for our family, regardless of the weighty dowry offered. Oh, thank goodness. I'm so glad it all worked out. You and me both. My father also insisted I take this. A hero's relic? Indeed. This is the Magic Lance Luin, which has been passed down for generations within my family. My father and siblings have no way of using it, since they bear no crest. Father told me I should take it, and use it to protect myself with. He said it's far better used protecting his daughter than gathering dust. Oh, that's so sweet. Your father really does mean well, Ingrid. He's unendingly stubborn, but I am proud of who he is. Dorothea, Professor? I want to thank you. It was important that we help you. It really was quite exciting too. So, you know, don't worry about it. I could never hand over my lovely Ingrid to some jerk who only wants her for her crest. Oh, do I belong to you now, rather than to myself? Hey, Dorothea. This is probably more than a little awkward, considering where it came from, but... Here. A ring? Is this... No. Is it? A proposal? <laughs> oh, Ingrid! I accept your offer! We'll be together forever! Stop teasing me, Dorothea. I'm trying to be sincere. I wanted to find a way to emphasize how grateful I am to you. So, I looked for something from among my things that I thought you would like. I mean, you may already have one like it, but I thought on the off chance you didn't. Ingrid, you are just adorable and I love it. But, perhaps we should lend this ring to our teacher for now. Our dear teacher can best decide how to use it. You fought hard enough. You've earned the right to have a little fun. As you wish, Dorothea. I gave the ring to you, so you can do whatever you please with it. <laughs> Alright, I got a win. And I got a spring. i send that iron lance away. I think this armor slayer needs to be fixed. Let's see here. Killer axe, tree with you do. Ring. No way. 
since he has a lower speed, it might go into for that. HP. Oh boy. Um, Ray. I'll switch that ring with that. And then, what's this for? Mercedes. See here. You'll get your much. Oh, 
Wow, her authority is terrible. So well, my weapon should be good. And I love sword. Oh, this bow. Silver bow, I need to fix that. Um, that's fine. Oh my gosh. Oh, no, I don't know just eating this at all. I'm not trying to waste too much money. Oh yeah, killer lance. Your Highness? Why are you in my room? Sorry, I need to hide in here. Just for a while. I'll have you know this is all your fault. Hide? From who? It's some a girl from the Academy. I'm sorry. It's a what? This is all because of your insistence that I go and ask a girl out. You didn't give her a dagger, did you? Is that why you're hiding? Does she have a dagger, Dimitri? Look, you kept true to your promise to improve your behavior. So I felt it was only right to make good on my side of the bargain, too. You invited a girl to dinner, and now she's chasing you around. What's the big deal? Unless... Did you use one of my pickup lines? Those words are dangerous in the wrong hands. With me, people know a line's a line and I'm joking. But you... Nobody's ever accused you of being funny. I clearly underestimated the difficulty of the task, but what do I do now? Relax, your highness. Relax. I'll sort this whole thing out real easy. 
All we have to do is figure out how to make this girl lose interest in you. And making girls lose interest is what I'm best at. You just wait right there, and I'll fix everything. It was my naivete that brought this about. I cannot place this immense burden on your shoulders. This is no job for an amateur. You need a professional's help. Trying to do everything yourself has never served you so well, so just leave this to the master. Even the dagger incident could have been avoided if you had just talked with me beforehand. There wasn't time for consultation. I only learned she was leaving on the day of her departure. Whatever you say. The point is, you need to learn to rely on me for these types of things in the future. For now, I got this. And if I ever need help with... something you know how to help with, then maybe you can do the same for me. Sylvain. Very well. When that time comes, I promise to help you as best I can. A knight of Fargus never goes back on his word. Isn't that right? You're a good man, Sylvain. I'm sorry to do this to you. Best of luck. Please, your highness. I've spent years honing my skills for just this situation. Watch and learn. Oh my god. Spending a lot of time at the training ground, Mercedes. As far as swordsmanship goes, you're like a whole new person. Thank you. I have such a great time when you teach me that improving comes naturally. It's all because of your own hard work. Compared to you, I... You shouldn't be so disappointed in yourself. You're improving too. You just need to keep at it. Well, I can hold a needle and thread without breaking anything now. That's something <laughs> that's a big step when we started you couldn't even hold a pair of scissors without twisting them apart true I'm sorry for being such a burden you're no bother at all I like sewing with you it reminds me of when I was young and my mother taught me how to sew my mother would sit with my brother and me and we'd all sew together oh, I really miss it even though I was barely better than you when I started. Did your mother like to sew, Dimitri? My birth mother? From my father's accounts, she wasn't great at it either. Oh, of course. I forgot that the Queen of Fargus passed away long ago. Yes. I don't really remember what she was like. But I remember my stepmother. Always sitting by the window, sewing away. I'm sure she would have been happy to teach you if you had asked. She always looked so lonely when she was sewing. So unreachable. She was kind to me, yes. But when she was like that, it was hard to talk to her. I'm not certain she would have wished to teach me. I'm so sorry, Dimitri. I didn't mean to bring up such difficult memories. Don't worry about it. If I don't talk about those things sometimes, I'll risk forgetting them altogether. And that would truly be a shame. I see. <laughs> but now I'm just going on and on about myself. Why don't you tell me more about you? More about me? Oh, goodness. I don't even know what to say. It's hard to think of something on the spot, isn't it? You could speak of your family, I suppose. You want to know more about my family? On that topic, I'm happy to oblige. In fact, I'm so glad you asked. It's important to think about your past and share it every now and then. This might take a while, but would you be willing to stay and listen? Of course. I will listen for as long as you wish. Uh -huh. Ingrid? I've been doing some thinking, and it occurs to me that I owe you an apology. What? Why do you seem so serious? In a just world, you would be happily married to Glenn. He... he truly loved you. 
and it's clear that you care deeply for him as well. But on that awful night, he died right before my eyes. I could do nothing to prevent it. In a way, I'm responsible for you losing the joyous future that should have been yours. I know my words can change nothing, but... I'm so sorry, Ingrid. No, Your Highness. There's... There's no need to apologize. Glenn's death... It still doesn't feel real. I always looked up to Glenn. He was the very picture of a perfect knight. Noble and virtuous. In the end, he laid down his life. The ultimate sacrifice. I feel proud of him in ways that words can't quantify. Proud? Truly? That's right. I feel proud that he died for those he was sworn to protect. Proud that he passed from this realm to the next as a perfect knight. Are you really trying to turn his needless death into an ideal to uphold? Ugh, you and he are so alike. Needless death? How can you say that? Glenn gave his life for you, for everyone, and this is how you speak of his sacrifice? You weren't there. You didn't witness his last moments. If you had, you wouldn't feel that way. I don't care to hear your interpretation of his final moments. He was, and will always be, an ideal knight. You would do well to rethink that ideal, my friend. Pardon me? He served in your guard! He took great pride in what he did. In protecting you. The very least you can do, is not spit on his memory. If you'll excuse me. What is the matter with me? Ah, I think I get it. So the Sky God got into an argument with the Earth God, then Dusker was created? To oversimplify it somewhat, yes. <laughs> There's something so mysterious about it. There are only mountains separating us from Dusker, but it's like a completely different world. This has been so interesting. I've never learned so much about it before. There are not many left to pass on the legends of Dusker. Really? That's a shame. It's almost like when someone dies, or a family line ends. I think a place is only truly destroyed when there's no one left to remember it. You should tell more people about Dusker to keep it alive. That is a strange thing to say. Oh? Why do you think that? Dusker is forever the enemy of Fargus. No one cares about our culture or history. I'm different, though. I don't know anyone who was killed by the people of Dusker. I don't hold a grudge against you, and I never have. Um, to do? Is this recipe from Dusker? You don't care for it. No, no. I was actually surprised by how much I enjoyed it. Would you teach me how to make it soon? But it seems I am ever the teacher with you, and seldom the student. You're right. I'm so sorry. Ah, oh, I have an idea. My mother taught me to bake the perfect sweets to go with tea. Would you like to learn how to bake them? It's a secret Martreats family recipe that's been passed down for generations. House Martreats of the Empire? I thought they were no more. It's true. My father's family was wiped out in the Empire. I'm the last living descendant. Are you certain you wish to impart such precious memories to me? Of course. Now that my family's gone, I'm the only one who knows the secret. The sweets would vanish from Fodlin if something happened to me. I see your point. Yes, I would like to learn. Hello, Felix. So, uh, it was your turn to clean out the greenhouse, right? Yes. Well, I went ahead and took care of it. I also cleaned up the warehouse. Why? I 
just wanted to help you out. So that... Okay, fine. I'm bribing you. So you'll forget. Forget what? Are you really gonna make me say it? Before, in the greenhouse, I want you to forget what you saw and heard. If you agree to forget about it, I'll take your shift in the stables. Do we have a deal? No, thanks. No? But that's not okay! You have to forget about it, right this moment! I can't. It's permanently etched in my memory. A mountain of sweets, as well as steaks and cakes. Stacks of them, apparently. I'm also intrigued by those bear and swamp beastie songs you mentioned. Ah. Oh. And I've been meaning to ask about the move that went along with Crumbs and Yums. Was that fencing footwork? Oh, stop it, Felix! You're a villain! Hmm? You think you're so funny? Keeping a straight face while mocking my singing and dancing? Well, you have to forget about it! Please! What if I make you a nice steak dinner? You like steak, don't you, Felix? It'll be yummy! This isn't about steak. I just... Fine! Be stubborn! Tell the whole world for all I care! I'll just learn to live with the funny looks I'll get from everyone! They'll all say, There goes that Annette! The girl with the funny ideas about food! You're just the evilest of villains, Felix! I'll hate you forever and ever! Hmm. I was just trying to be nice. Funny ideas about food? Even the bullies in her head are ridiculous. I really don't understand that girl. moment. Uh, Felix! Lysithia, you look mortified. How long have you been there? Were you watching me? You were, weren't you? I was, yes. Uh, for once I thought I had some privacy. Did you say something? Here! What's this for? I'm buying your silence. With cake. Take it. I'm not sure what to be silent about. If people knew I was shoveling cake into my face by the fistful, they'd think me nothing more than a child. Adults eat cake. You'll never understand. Just take this, will you? No, I don't like sweets. Does your refusal mean you'll be telling everyone about my cake-shoveling ways? I just don't like sweets, that's all. Nonsense! Nobody can resist something so delicious! Look, I'm giving you this cake whether you like it or not. Eat it, toss it, throw it at an unsuspecting victim, the choice is yours. Just please, don't mention this to anyone. What was her problem? What am I supposed to do with this cake? I love how every girl keeps bribing so uh, Felix with cake. Oh boy. Hey Sylvain, uh, can we talk? What's up Ash? Looking for more life tips? Uh, no. But I did want to thank you for coming to my aid in battle the other day. <laughs> that? No need to thank me for that. No, really, I insist. If you hadn't been there, I definitely would have been finished. You really set a model for my training. I can only hope I'll be able to save someone like that someday. Again with the studying and the training? You're so stubborn you make Ingrid and His Highness seem downright easygoing. My advice on the whole thing is to just follow your instincts. That's what I do. If someone's in trouble, I help them. You don't need to be a valiant knight to know that. Doesn't matter if the person is an ugly old man or the cutest girl you've ever seen. You help them. 
So you're saying... Everybody's the same, deep down. It's our job to help anyone who needs it. Ah. Oh. What? You're looking at me funny. Did I say something wrong? No, no, I'm just surprised, that's all. You're actually a much better person than I thought. Was that a compliment? I can't tell. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't mean any insult. I was just really impressed by what you said about helping people without even thinking. To jump in and help someone without any thought at all of reward. That is real virtue. <laughs> How did you say that with a straight face? I'd be embarrassed if I were you. Come on, Ash. You're an honest and overall great guy. You'll be an honest and overall great knight, too. Of course, people like you need to watch out for greedy people. Huh? Remember when I said I didn't need any thanks? Well, I didn't say anything about not wanting a reward. There's a girl, and we... We had a misunderstanding about who was allowed to date who, so, uh... I need to hang out in your room until everything calms down. Should only be a day. Or two. Tops. Sylvain? Come on, Ash. Remember? If someone's in trouble, you help them. You want to be a great knight, yeah? Oh, fine. Since you helped me, but just this once. All right, I knew I could count on you. You'll definitely be a great knight. He really would be a great person if he could just stop all the scandal. timing. There's something I want to say to you. Uh-oh. <laughs> Did I do something wrong? Did you spot me sneaking back in this morning? Or is it about that girl who got mad I kissed her sister goodnight? I can explain either way. No, I'm not here to get after you about those things. Surely other people have that covered. What I really want to talk about is your behavior during our training sessions. When we're sparring, you're always passing on great opportunities to get the edge on me. It's almost as though you're going out of your way to make me think you're incapable. Nah, I just like giving other people the spotlight. Uh-huh. It's not that you took something I said to heart. About how you don't have to work hard to be good at stuff and how that isn't fair. I did take those things to heart. We're friends, right? I'd be sad if you started to hate me. There's just one thing I want you to remember. Guys like me, who hate hard work and sort of get by on our wits, it all falls apart eventually. I'm smart enough to know that. So, I respect people like you. I mean it. Oh, is that sincerity? It's kind of creeping me out. It's just so unlike you. Huh? When you say nice things like that, I can't take joy in beating you. I want to beat you when you're at your best. That's why it bothers me so much when you don't try your hardest against me. Let me put this a different way. I've always been treated like I'm special, and I'm not. At least, I don't think I am. I'm just tired of people thinking they know what I can and can't do. When everybody expects something of you, or envies you, it's kind of suffocating. I'd rather people think I'm dumb. Well, I mean, I can still be pretty dumb. <laughs> I have to admit, I have a hard time understanding where you're coming from. Just know that I want you to keep being great at everything without trying. If you stop being that way, I won't have any competition. Huh, <laughs> competition, huh? I like the sound of that. Where the heck were you when I was growing up? If I had someone like you back then, I think I may have turned out different. And better, I mean. Anyway, I'd love to chat more with you. Would you like to grab some tea with me, or...? Oh, sure thing. The very next moment I'm free. For now, I need to get to my magic training. Oh, I see. Some other time then. I look forward to it, Annette. Okay, Mercy. This time we're gonna be really good and get the supplies with no detours. You're so good at sticking to a plan. 
I should leave the shopping to you. I'll stay out of your way and just browse. Hey, that's not fair. I want to browse too. Looks like you girls are having a good time. Uh, Annie? Is this a friend of yours? I've never seen this person before. I'm sorry to be rude, but we're kind of busy. Wait a minute. I think you're shopping with money you stole. But no need to worry your pretty little heads. I'm just gonna have to take it back for us common folk. Step back, Mercy. This could get dangerous. Listen here, you. There's no way you can win against me. I don't want to fight you, but I will if I have to. So just back away. You think you can talk to me that way? I'm gonna... Oh, the knights are coming. What? Annie, run! <sighs> this is far enough. We should be safe. I hope so. But what were you thinking? That sort of behavior isn't like you at all. I just... I thought you were in danger, Mercy. You're actually blaming me for this? It's like I don't even know you anymore. Mercy! I was just trying to protect you. Apologies for my late arrival, Mercedes. My duties ran long, as per usual. There's no need to apologize at all. Please, have a seat. We've met for tea so many times, but you never seem to get used to it, do you, Ingrid? Not entirely, no. I'm not accustomed to being treated so... delicately. Anyway, what will we talk about today? I actually wanted to gripe about something that's been bothering me. You? Gripe? Now that's unusual. I'm happy to listen, of course. It's the least I can do after all the kindness you've shown me. Thank you. The one thing I really wanted to talk about is marriage. Oh? Yes. I received a letter from my adoptive father about marriage discussions with a noble family. And will you accept? That's the problem. No matter what I decide, I'll probably be married off anyway. What I really want to do is help those in need. But I think it would be more difficult to do so if I married a nobleman. Understandably so. Sounds to me like you need a strategy to silence your father. Sorry? To... silence him? Don't you agree? It seems the best course of action would be to consider severing all ties with the family and running away. <laughs> We don't need to go that far. I'm sorry, I really just needed to let that out. I don't need you to worry about solving my problems. Oh, okay. It's just a bit personal for me, actually. My own father has brought countless marriage proposals to my attention. He always was obsessed with me carrying on the family bloodline. At a very young age, my hand had already been promised to someone in marriage. But Glenn died young. That must have been difficult for you. Would you have married him if he had survived? Hmm. That's a good question. It's hard to imagine now. Although I did admire him quite a lot, he held true to the ideals of knighthood, proudly serving the king. Even after all these years, I aspire to be the type of knight that he embodied. But that's just it. I'm not a tool for furthering my family's fortunes. I'm a knight at heart regardless of what my father desires. I see. A very noble cause indeed. <laughs> How strange that we should be worrying about the same thing. Even though we are such different people. It's true. Enjoying a nice chat over tea with you like this makes me realize maybe the paths we walk aren't so different after all. Don't you think? I do. These tea parties of ours... They really are something special. That they are. Ingrid, I would love to get to know you better if that's okay. I want to know about your childhood, your favorite books, the sweets you like, anything at all. <laughs> Absolutely. 
I'm happy to speak with you anytime. And I want to know you better too, Mercedes. Thank <laughs> you.